All right, we are here at the 2023 20, AWSI show, checking out the new 2024 gear. I am here with pro rider Stephen Eckersdyke and a pretty awesome blogger too, man. I love your videos; they're pretty awesome. Sick. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. So, um, thanks for taking the time to uh, walk us through what's new in the core lineup. Yeah, so there's a lot of our, our lot, pleasure. There's a lot of really cool new stuff. So uh, let's maybe start with the kites here. Yeah, I would say so. So we already got them lined up for you. And uh, I think actually if you, you stand here, you'll have a good view of, of the wing tips. So first off, I'll start off with the XR8. I think the XR doesn't need a very big introduction because most of you already know it. It's the 8th version of this very successful kite, arguably our most successful kite because of its easiness to ride. If I'm going to sum up the XR8, I would just say super easy kite to ride. Boots super high. I think it's proven itself plenty of times in the Wu leaderboard records, jumping a couple of world records. And you know, you pull that bar down and you're just going. So super stable kite. And for this year, well, when you have such a successful kite, it's always a little bit hard to change it up and see, hey, what's gonna be new? What can we improve? Because you improve one thing on a kite and then it has to go at the cost of something else. So it's always redefining that balance. So what we're really focused on with this year is our new Exotex leading, ed leading edge material. It's a, it's a weave that's only, uh, that only we have. And it's a stiffer weave, so it's a very stiff Dacron material. It boosts tear resistance, and overall you can create a stiffer airframe with that. But creating a stiffer leading edge material also means you need to change your kite a little bit. Because for the people out there that don't know, for your kite to steer, it actually needs to move. So if it's just a super stiff frame, it won't steer. So with that, we played around with the leading edge diameter to make the leading edge thinner, especially here towards the tips. And that makes for a kite that is slightly more agile while still retaining all the lift in the center of the kite. So that feeling that, you're, that you know from the XR of pulling down your bar and boosting sky high, that is still applicable to this, run, to this one. Um, next to that, we also have the Cortex-2 ripstop. Um, this material has proven itself over the years. It's a triple weave that works really, 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 really well. Sorry, I said it really quite often there, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so I would say that's about it for the, the XR8. This is still the kite. This is the do-it-all kite. If you're unsure what kite to get, this would be a really good start for you. Then, are, are there big differences in the, in the Lightwind version of the kite, like in the way that they've designed it? Yeah, in the Lightwind version, we went for a different leading edge material, Exotex Light, um, to just save those little grams wherever we can to make it a lighter, lighter kite. But in general, it still builds upon the same frame. And I think from our entire Lightwind range, the XR Lightwind range um, ch yeah, changes the least if you go into that Lightwind range from the general kites. If you look at the Nexus for instance, you might have noticed that the Nexus and the Nexus Lightwind look quite different because the Nexus Lightwind is more of a bow shape because generally bow shapes create more power and that's what you want in a Lightwind construction. It's still five strut. Due to the five strut, um, well while we're at it, let's just compare the two Lightwind kites that we have. Nexus Lightwind on one hand, which is a three strut frame. XR Lightwind, which is a five strut frame. In my opinion, and what I found a lot, is that I actually prefer the XR, even though it's slightly heavier. So do note, if you fly an XR Lightwind, it's gonna be slightly harder to keep in the sky, but the five stud frame just creates more power. It's a real powerhouse, just like the XR itself. Where the Nexus, which is a three strut frame, it's lighter in the sky, it's more nimble, more agile, it steers a bit quicker but it generates slightly less power. So that's always kind of like, okay, what do I prefer? Do I prefer a lot of power, slightly less nimble, or 
Do I prefer a nimble kite that turns quick that I need to fly fast in order to create power? So that's a kind of, yeah, both sides. Yeah. Do, the, I had a chance to ride the, the 15 meter XR at Hatteras and found it went upwind really, really well. How do, how do those two kites compare for like their upwind ability for someone who's like a progressing rider who's just sort of getting in, in the sport and learning? I, I think, especially once you're learning and getting into it, the, um, the XR will be slightly better because the, the power that it creates when you, once you pull the bar down is just more. Your power on demand, your sheet and go, however you want to call it. Basically, if you go from bar up to bar down, it will create power. Where the next is, you need to steer it a little bit more to create power. And this also translates to upwind, because for upwind riding, you actually want to ride as slow as possible. If you ride fast, there's too much apparent wind, and the wind shifts. Long, very theoretical story, um, but basically, to go upwind, you want to ride slower. And therefore, I think it's better to have a kite that creates power when you sheet in. So, with that in, in the back of my mind, I would say XR is slightly easier for those beginners. Okay, cool. And then I would say let's jump to the next kite, which would be the XR Pro. And yeah, uh, I think for the launch of this XR Pro, we yeah. were super, super lucky. I'm not it sure. It was if... quite the launch day. <laughs> it, it was, was unbelievable. Quite, it was literally quite the launch day, exactly. Yeah. So this kite launched, uh, I think, about three weeks ago. Um, and for an event in Europe, St. Peter Ording, the Kitesurf Masters, we had our international team rider Joshua Emanuel and Martin Hager. Martin Hager is Dutch, so he was already there, but the South African Joshua Emanuel, who actually flew over for the event. Um, at that same time, we were going to launch our kite already for that event. That was pre-planned. But this massive storm front, low pressure, came into Denmark. And our, one, some of our team riders had thought, hey, I want to jump a real world record, let's go. So that's basically what they did. They took the XR Pro and straight away, Martin Hager broke the world record with the XR Pro. And then a few sessions later, Joshua Anwanwell broke it again with 36.2 meters, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's 100 and how many feet is that? I remember doing the conversion. That uh, that's 110 feet? or something, 100 and something that's feet. so high. It's, it, it's big and that also <laughs> the the previous record holder before that was the XR8 um, I'm not sure if at that time sorry XR7 I'm not sure if at that time it was the XR7 I mean Jamie Overbeek is also up there and it's been switching around a little bit but yeah Previous before that the XR has always been a very well performing kite for jumping high and don't get me wrong, the XR8 still boosts really high and I actually think that most people will jump higher with the regular XR8. So this is called the XR Pro for a reason, it is a pro model and with that we actually went all out on the technicalities and uh, the materials to create a frame that's super stiff and performs in the high wind area. So especially if you are a big air rider that wants to have massive power, quick recovery in the loops, and just a super stable frame once the conditions get really gnarly, this is the kite for you. But it also means it's a more technical ride, kite to ride. If you remember, we talked about the sheet and go, the pulling down of your bar and just getting lifted into the sky. This kite has that a lot less. Uh, even though it looks exactly the same, shape-wise as an XR when you see it in the sky. It is a kite that's slightly more technical to ride and therefore I do not recommend it to beginner kiters because you're gonna have way more fun with an XR. Um, this frame, this stiff frame is something that we have achieved with Alula. Um, I believe that right now or at the moment Alula is pretty much the stiffest frame you can find on the market and yeah it's crazy if you ride this kite in super strong wind conditions you'll be amazed about the stability you loop it um, and it just comes up a lot quicker it's an amazing kite to ride if you're into looping
If you're not into looping, just get the normal XR, enjoy that, boost high, and then once you pull the multiple loops with that and you think like, okay, I would like something that recovers quicker, but still has great lift, then go to the XR Pro. Um, do you have any questions for the XR Pro, John? Or Oh, I was from your definitely side? pretty impressed by the uh, release day, <laughs> the world record the day it was released. That's like, it kind of speaks for itself, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, multiple people were like, oh, you guys must have staged that. But I, I promise you, it was not staged. It was totally planned that it was going to release that day. And we were just super, super lucky to have that storm. And two of our main big air riders that are known for boosting high in the country. Yeah, yeah. that's super cool. Yeah, so that was a good one. Yeah. So then of course the XR, we have the XRs in our lineup, which uh, the XR8 is part of our Universal Plus series. And with our Universal Plus series, what I tried to say there, or what that uncovers is kites that can do it all. So the XR Pro is definitely not part of that, but our Nexus right over here is. Um, it's not new this year because as you might know, Core own does a two year life cycle for every model. So it's not that every year we have six new kites that we need to bring on the market. We only bring three new kites on the market and renew them like that. So our design team actually has a longer time to change them. I mean, we don't just want to change the colors and call it a new model. We actually want changes that benefit you. So for the people that wonder, hey, okay, so XR is Universal Plus, Nexus is Universal Plus, what's the difference? The XR, it's super power, it's still an all-round kite. You can use it in the waves, but its real superpower is just boosting and power. Where I would say the superpower of the Nexus is that it's really good in the waves as well. So you can boost high with it. It's my favorite kite, for instance, because you can twin tip it, I foil it, I ride it in the waves, and it does everything very well. It doesn't have the power that the XR has when you pull the bar down. It's a slightly more technical kite to ride, but therefore you get a very playful kite. And if I have to describe the Nexus, it's a kite that invites to play. And that just really fits to my style. If you see me riding, I'm just playing out there, trying new things. Some of the stuff I land by accident, I'm like, oh, that kind of worked. Let's try to work on that more. And that's something that I love about the Nexus. You can make a mistake and it kind of gives you cat-like reflexes because you make the right adjustment and it will save you. So if you want more on that, I'm pretty sure that you can go back on John's YouTube channel and have a look at the, the Nexus talk that we did at the AWSI last year. <laughs> yeah. So between the, um, the new XR and the Nexus, which kite do you think the guys at King of the Air would be using it? Would they kind of split or are they all going to be on XRs? I think especially with the XR Pro now, uh, Red Bull King of the Air and the Big Air competitions were definitely high on our mind when we designed the XR Pro. Just to have the power of that XR but get more of that loopability, nimbleness of the Nexus into the XR and that's what we achieved with the, with the XR Pro. So. It's kind of a, a mix of both worlds. Yeah, so the big, the big jumping and the smooth turning. Exactly, yeah, and you know, you make a mistake, you loop the kite too low, for instance. On an XR, on a regular XR, that can cost you. On the Nexus, it doesn't really matter because it will always come up fairly quick. But the XR Pro is in that way similar to the Nexus where it will come up super quick and I think that was the main thing that I was impressed about with the Alula, you know, you pull it into a loop and all of a sudden out of the loop it seems to accelerate. Most kites after loop seem to get stuck and then you need to swing back under, but the Alula actually keeps on accelerating because it's lighter and you do have a five strut kite. So more struts means more power but also more weight. And if you make the struts out of Alula, you save that weight. So that essentially flies more like a free strut kite when it comes to the speed, the agility, but still having the power of a five strut kite. Are the, um, the bladder material, is it the same yeah. in the XR Pro? Yeah, so that's something that we've been thinking about a lot. The, the bladder is actually where you can save the most weight. 
Um, most people don't realize that, but bladders are quite heavy, but they also have a very important job, and that's keeping air in your kite. So there's something called micro holes, and if you go too thin, too light with the bladder, you can have micro holes, and that just means that during your session, your kite will slowly deflate. Um, they're more prone to punctures. So at core, we really think like, yes, performance is important, but we want performance over a longer time, and we don't want uh, just want to make a super light something, a kite or a product, and it breaks. You need to bring it to the dealer like three days later because you're like, hey, sorry, my kite's leaking. And then, so we all use the same bladders in all of our products. They're proven over time. Yes, we are still experimenting with different bladders and different thicknesses, but for now we've stayed with our proven concept of bladder thickness. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. And you guys have two other kites that remained in the lineup from before the section? Yeah, yes, exactly. Oh, we'd almost forget. There used to be a time where Core had one kite, and then we only had two kites, and it was so easy. Now we actually have a lot of kites, and that's to accommodate all of you people. So these are the Universal Plus kites. The GTS is also a Universal Plus kite, which is, again, it does everything, but that superpower of the GTS is really fast loops, aggressive loops, high power. It was my kite of choice for Red Bull King of the Air a couple of years back, because back then you could still get away with low loops and get good points for it. We didn't have to double, we didn't have to go massively high as long as your kite went low. At least that's what I like to enjoy doing. Then the GTS was definitely the right kite for that. Um, it's a bit more of an aggressive kite. If you are also unhooking, then you'll really enjoy the GTS. And then the other two kites are our x Light and Section, which are dedicated kites. They're very specific kites for specific target groups. The Section is our wave kite. It has a, a, a turn that goes from the middle of the kite, so it produces less power when you loop it. It drifts really well. It's a very light frame made for yeah, shredding in the waves going down the line and making sure that a kite stays in the perfect position. It's a free strike kite and the x light on the other hand is our foil specific kite. We try to make it as light as possible. As you might have noticed from our talks before, struts equal weight. So if you take struts out, you save weight and make a kite that's easier to fly in light wind. And that's the x light. It's a one strut kite, so it's a very light kite, easy to fly in light wind, and very foil specific. I wouldn't take it out in the waves, for instance, but, well, without a foil. Everything foil related, go at it, have fun, but it's not a board that's meant to ride, be ridden on a surfboard or on a twin tip. Um, it has a really in, nice light feeling in the hands when you ride it foiling. Yeah, I I, that's, that's that. I think, is the superpower of such a light kite. So, foiling, generally, it's very light wind conditions. And do you know that feeling when you're flying your kite, you get it just a little bit too far to the side in light wind, and it doesn't want to go back up. And then you have to down loop it in order to get it back into the wind window. But looping it might not be convenient. You might not feel comfortable with it. And that's where the X-Lite really shines, because it gives you a range of two to three knots below where a normal kite doesn't... If the normal kite starts falling out of the sky on the side because it's too heavy, the x light will still comfor comfortably... Sorry. <laughs> comfortably stay in the sky. <laughs> and it's just a very easy, nice kite uh, once you're foiling because when you're foiling, you want to focus on that foil. You don't want to be busy with the kite and try to keep it in the sky because the foil is already enough to take care of. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's maybe take a look at uh, some of the boards in the lineup. Yes. So as it's starting to get windy, it actually blew over. But... It's a testament to how light they are. <laughs> oh, I like that, John. <laughs> and I agree. So... Um, these are the two boards. For now, uh, I know I just put the Imperator up, but I'm going to put it back down. Let's start off with the Fusion. The Fusion is our do-it-all board. And in recent years, it's actually gotten very successful with riders like Yannick. 
Janek Szefuszewski, which was who was riding in Red Bull King of the Air. And he really loved the Fusion. And the main reason why he loved the Fusion is because of the bottom shape. And I'm kind of following him here, him here at the moment because I also ordered myself the new Fusion 6 because it's a board that just grips really, really well. You're riding out there and you don't have to think about, okay, now I need to move my weight more to the front or more to the back because otherwise my fins slide out. This board will grip and it grips really well. So recently for the tricks that I'm trying, going into blind and then trying to pop a back roll or front roll out of blind, you can't really be too technical on where you put your weight because in chop especially it gets really hard. And that's where this board shines. It is a board that has proven itself over the years. Some of the, um, some, some of you might know, but Carf is, a, is the brand where it all started. Core evolved from Carf. And it's a, it's a board brand, a very unique board with a vacuum infusion technology that I'll talk about in just a moment. And also, we are really experimenting with carbon layups. And everything that we learn from Carved actually trickles down to the Fusion. So, new for this year, for instance, is that we have our Carton 2, which is essentially 3D printed carbon in a way that, no, we don't print the actual carbon, but we do a carbon layup. And instead of having a weave, where everything goes inter, interlining each other, we put it on top of each other. And what that does is that it doesn't create stress points. If you think about uh, a string going over and under, it creates a stress point right there. And by putting them on top of each other, you don't have that, so you can lose less material, and therefore the board becomes lighter. Then the main differences also with this board is that we really try to become more sustainable with the brand. By doing this new carbon layup, we are actually able to print just the layup of the board and we don't have to create a massive sheet of carbon with a lot of cutoff. Obviously, that is better for the environment. Next to that, we've also been using a more eco-friendly resin. And this is just it's a small change, right? Again, Fusion 6, 6th edition of this board. And therefore, we want to keep the customers happy. And it's a board that you are yeah, really going to enjoy out there. Yeah, for having the extra grip that you were talking about earlier, do you think it's because of the channels on the board or is it the rocker shape or a combination of the two? I think it's really a combination of the two. Obviously, you have a nice rocker on the board, a consistent rocker but it's these channels really make a big difference and especially like I'm not sure if we're able to show you on the on the camera but it has a channel line here there then a V in the in the middle of the board to make your landings a little bit softer and the channels run all the way to the tips so that just creates really nice straight patterns for the water to flow through and even though this V is something we also have on the carved board, the carved board doesn't have the channels and therefore it feels more alive, it's more playful, but you need to be a bit more careful on where you put your weight. Um, so yeah, so just before we start going to the carved, the way this is made, and that's basically the, the way that everyone does it, it's the standard way of making a board, it's a sandwich construction. So you put everything into a big mold, into a big press. So you do your carbon layups over the wood, then you put resin on top of it and it gets pressed together. Due to that, it's a very quick way to, to make a board. It's a very good way, but you have a lot of resin that you need to use. Um, if you look at a board, the properties don't come from the resin. The properties come from the carbon which is wrapped around the core, which should be a light core, like the Polonia wood that we're using inside here. The resin is there just to bind everything together and it doesn't necessarily have good, good characteristics other than binding and it's just excess weight. And then once we get to the carved, 
The main difference here is when you pick it up, you'll already feel it's a lot lighter. And that is due to our vacuum infusion technology. So it uses the same wood core as the fusion. By now, it also, uh, the fusion also uses the same carbon layup. But the big difference is the way that it's made, which is the vacuum infusion. So what we do with this board is everything, we put the, the layups on top of each other, put it in a plastic bag, suck all the air out of it under a, a very high pressure, and then that pressure starts sucking in resin that goes through the board. And it's hard, it might be hard to see on the board, but if I move it around a little bit, you actually see that the top isn't like flat. It has a, it has a feel to it and you actually feel the lines that we see and seed into the board in order to get the, the carbon and the resin to grip better. And that's because there is, there is no extra resin that levels everything out nicely. And that basically gives you a board that is very pure. It's wood, it's carbon and a little bit of resin which create very nice, lively responses in this board. The thing that really strikes me whenever I ride ride the Imperators is that they're unbelievably smooth through chop but they still go upwind like unbelievably well for a board that's that smooth yeah what, what, what do you think it is characteristic wise that makes it so good at those two things which are two hard things to combine yeah so I, I, I would say that um, a rocker usually creates a board that rides nicely through chop rocker and flex if you don't have rocker and flex uh, it's gonna be a flat board it's gonna bite into the next chop so with this bottom shape that we have, because it's actually a big V keel, let's see if it's possible to show, but it's a double concave with a big V in the middle. And with that V, we were able to create quite, um, quite a flat area in the middle, in the concave. So if you look for the concave, there is not that much rocker, but your rails, and the middle still have a lot of rocker and that just creates that nice flow of easy gliding through the centers while the tips are still far enough up to create a smooth ride through the chop. Okay, cool. Awesome. Then unless you have any other questions, I would say uh, we're, we are there. All right, cool. We'll, uh, we'll send everyone to the website with the link in the bottom of the video description. And uh, Awesome. Thanks Thank for your you time. very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time as well, watching. If you're still watching here, you're awesome. That's going to help us out a lot and also John out a lot. Uh, hopefully so, see you on the next one. So, so I hear you're living here in North America now. Ooh. Is this true? Uh, living is a big word. Um, I'm still registered in the Netherlands. Yeah. But I have a van in Europe. My girlfriend has a van in North America and in Canada to be exact yeah. and I've been spending a lot of time there like your yeah. I like North America it's beautiful it's big it's wide it's open amazing yeah. people that I've met here and yeah I will be spending a fair amount of time here yeah so you're in the Squamish area I heard a rumor maybe oh ah, yeah I heard that rumor too <laughs> actually someone thought I was local at Squamish can you believe yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was actually in East Coast Canada this okay. year, but because we have the van, we were there two years ago. Yeah. And we drove the van back from Squamish and I still had some video content from Squamish. Yeah. Um, I'll probably be back there in two years, okay. but next summer will be East Coast Canada again. Like Nova Scotia or? Magdalene Islands. Magdalene Islands, oh nice. Magdalene Islands are high on the list, really looking forward to, to see that place. Heard many good stories. Parlez-vous Francais? So, uh, uh, un petit peu. <laughs> kind of have to, my girlfriend yeah. is French Canadian, but unfortunately yeah. I haven't haven't um you'll pick it up fast I'll, I'll pick it up more and more especially with the family so no it's great it's a nice place and so many so many so many areas to explore it's yeah. such a vast area well it's i look crazy. forward to some videos from the magdalene islands yes and maybe me some too. magazine articles from the magdalene islands let's stay in touch about that right. cool. <laughs> well, cheers well, thanks again yeah awesome thank you very much and see you on the next one